Hey, what's going on, CISSP wannabes? I'm Colin Weaver. These are the IT Dojo CISSP questions of the day, where each time I come at you, I bring you two questions to help you continue to prep for your CISSP exam. So, here comes question number one. Your company is investigating the implementation of a smart card authentication system uh, to control access to the facility as well as to the computer systems. My question for you is, given the list of things that I'm about to show you, which of them should not be considered as one of the system's security control objectives? Go ahead and take a look at those options. Click pause if you need to. Give it some thought. When you're ready, click play. We'll talk it all through. Choice number one says that the mechanism should provide for strong resistance to fraud, tampering, or other exploitation. Totally. Okay, that's one of the big selling points of smart cards is that they are, by design, tamper resistant. Okay, again, we don't say tamper proof, we say tamper resistant. But the cards should zeroize themselves if they are physically tampered with, and the techniques for actually trying to extract data from smart cards are not, by any stretch of the imagination, everyday easy things to do. So uh, that is definitely not the correct answer choice. Choice number two says the mechanism should allow for rapid authentication, and that's definitely true. We want to make sure that an authentication mechanism that gets implemented is something that is a fast and quick mechanism. Now, there's no specificity on you know how many seconds or nanoseconds or microseconds or whatever that it takes in order for you to actually be able to accomplish that authentication, but suffice to say it has to be fast. It can't be a prolonged process for authenticating somebody when they're trying to gain access to, to the facility or to a particular area of the facility or to their system. It's got to be quick. Choice three, credentials are issued only by authorized officials. Of course, okay. just not anybody can create an account. You know, your manager just doesn't pop in and, and create a new account for you when you're dealing with user accounts. You go through an actual process um, to actually have that account approved and then created in a structured and controlled way. And the same thing is here gonna be true with uh, smart cards is that we wanna make sure that smart cards are issued only by authorized personnel. Next item on the list says that credentials have to be adequately verified before issuing a card to someone. Yeah, uh, you don't wanna just issue a card to somebody because they showed you a copy of their electric bill or something like that. Uh, you wanna make sure that you go through an adequate level of vetting. How much is adequate? That's for you to decide within your organization. Okay, uh, it could involve, you know, simply providing multiple forms of government issue ID, it could involve uh, a background check, it could involve any number of things, but it's yours to define what adequate is as far as the criteria for giving somebody you know, an, an actual smart card. So that's gotta work within the policy of your organization. That leaves us with the last option, which is not something that you would consider, so that makes it the correct answer choice here, and that is that the, that the uh, mechanism must support SHA 256 and at least AES 192. Uh, no, uh, that's not a specific requirement. In fact, uh, AES may not even be involved at all in, in, in the use of smart cards. So uh, that is definitely not something that we would be looking for, but all the other things would be. All right, let's keep on with this smart card theme in question number two. Uh, your organization is replacing its username and password-based authentication mechanism with a smart card implementation. My question for you is, which of the items that I'm gonna show you is the least likely to be a requirement for issuance of a smart card. There's your list, give it some thought, click pause if you need to. When you think you got it, click play and we'll walk through. How about choice number one? It says that you're gonna require the user to appear in person for the registration process. And that is totally something that uh, should be pretty high on your list. Uh, just issuing smart cards remotely without ever having you know, seen the person or verified the person uh, in any physical way, generally regarded as not appropriate. Uh, again, I'm not trying to say that this is the way that you're gonna do it in your shop, but uh, specifically, you go look at FIPS 201, uh, look at the link down below for that. Um, it absolutely says that at least one time during the enrollment process, the user has to appear in person. Um, so that is a highly likely thing for you to wanna to go in and do. So let's say that's probably not gonna be the answer here. Let's keep going. Choice number two says that you're gonna require the user to prove knowledge of their current login password. Uh, no, I'm not saying never, but certainly for FIPS 201, no. Uh, that is not something that's involved in the, uh, in, in the issuance process. So going in and saying, hey, prove you know your existing password for this user account, and that's gonna be part of validating who you are, not likely. So 
that's going to be the right answer. But let's go ahead and look at the other ones just to be sure and feel good about it. Choice three is that you're going to record a copy of the user's fingerprints during the enrollment process. Uh, absolutely, this is something that it would be commonly considered as, as a thing to do. Uh, definitely in the United States with the federal government, if you're going to be issued a PIV card or a CAC, uh, you are going to get fingerprinted in the process. So um, that, that's just you know, normal practice for doing that. And because you're trying to have a really trustworthy mechanism of authentication, recording a person's biometric data to be associated with the issuance of the smart card as part of the, the identity proofing process and the issuance process is definitely something that would be considered. Next choice says that you're going to take a photo of the person to include on or in the card. So either electronically store it uh, somehow within the card or actually just print it on the card. And that's totally something that's gonna be there as well because um, it's, it's not unusual for a smart card to also act as your ID card or your company issued ID. So definitely you're gonna to wanna to have a picture of the person that's gonna be on the card. And then the last choice says that you would require the user to provide their passport and another government issued photo ID. And this is very common as well to go in and say that we need to see, you know, two or more, really two, uh, government issued photo IDs and passports are otherwise ubiquitous. And so some other acceptable form of government ID that's determined by your organization or by your government um, as being acceptable if you work for the government is going to be there and, and true for that. So, you know, I, if I issue you an IT Dojo ID card, not going to work, okay, because I, I can issue those all day long and they don't, you know, the vetting process that I would put you through is not going to be adequate compared to what a government should put you through. So um, that is definitely something that would be included in the process of issuance for this. All right, two more questions down. See you.